So unless you've been living under a rock for the past few years, you've probably heard how social media can impact your mental health. So it can cause depression, it can cause anxiety, as well as a general feeling of shittiness. However, I think it can also impact your hormone levels. I watched a video from the channel What I've Learned the other day, and it made the very strong argument that Instagram in particular can impact your testosterone levels. The bad thing about television is that everybody you see on television is doing something better than what you're doing. So you humans are social creatures. You always have been and you always will be. What we tend to do is we tend to compare ourselves to the people around us. So if you live in a small community, you try to compare yourself to other people and you try to get an idea of where you are on this social totem pole. Are you a winner? Are you a loser? Are you somewhere in the middle? However, with social media, now you are comparing yourself not to the people around you, but to the people on your screen. So when you use Instagram, you're getting a snapshot into another world. If you only use Instagram a few minutes per day, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes per day, there shouldn't be any issues just because you're only keeping it to a snapshot. But if you're using it hours and hours per day, as some people do, you are getting much more than a snapshot and these snapshots compile into your reality. It's been shown that chess players who win increase their testosterone, but if they lose, they decrease their testosterone. So you're competitive in the physical world, but it's also mental. And if your mental world is only Instagram, the odds of you winning is very, very low. And I would say this can absolutely impact your hormone levels. And especially for men, but also for women, there is gonna be a strong correlation between testosterone and status. So the higher your status, the more you feel like a winner, the more you're perceived as a winner, both by other people and by yourself, the more your testosterone will raise. And the more your testosterone grows up, the more likely you are to exhibit dominance, to try to uh, you know, be competitive and try to have a drive to be successful. On the other hand, if your testosterone is low, your status is probably gonna be low and you're gonna exhibit behaviors like social anxiety, which tend to decrease your testosterone even further. So you either get an upward spiral or a downward spiral based on your behaviors and based on your physiology, and there is an interaction between the two. However, you have to realize if you are comparing yourself to people on Instagram, you can never win. If you are following the typical people on Instagram, not just your friends, you're following celebrities, you're following movie stars, you're following singers, you're following Instagram models, you're following sports stars, all these highly successful people, the point zero 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 something zero one percent of humanity, you can never win. You can never get that feeling of momentum in your life. You can never be satisfied with what you're doing or what you've done or what you will do. And therefore, it becomes very, very difficult. Furthermore, you're not even seeing reality. You're following these winners, these very highly successful people, and you're not even seeing their real life. In a lot of cases, they are successful because they don't show everything. They only show the fake parts or even a just a small real fraction of their life. So they might take a hundred pictures in a day and post one to Instagram. I've seen people do this. They take hundreds of pictures and they post the perfect one to Instagram. That is not reality. Or the pictures might not even be real. Photoshopping is rampant. A lot of people use filters and it's just a very common thing for Instagram to not be reality. If you consume a lot of fitness content in particular, I think you can get in a very bad place mentally, and it's very plausible that this can impact your hormones. This can actually reduce your testosterone because you are placing yourself artificially lower on this totem pole. And it's not necessarily always the influencer's fault. I posted a picture the other day and it got 700 likes, which is by far the most I've ever gotten. What was the picture? It was a transformation picture, and one of the pictures was shirtless. That's probably the first picture I've ever posted on social media that was shirtless, and it got like two or three times my normal number of likes. I've noticed another fitness account, Brennan Morris. He's a really good account. You should definitely follow him. But one thing I noticed is that he posts half selfies and half informational, useful, educational content, 
Which do you think gets more likes? It's not the informational, useful content. It is the selfies. They get two and a half to three times as many likes on an extremely consistent basis. And that is just the reality. Uh, creators are incentivized to put out this type of content. So maybe in some cases it is their fault, but in a lot of cases it is them just observing what people want to see. They want to see beautiful people. They want to see handsome people. They want to see abs. They want to see luxurious beards, which I am providing to you right now. They want to see successful people. They don't want to follow normal people or average people. They they don't want to be educated with you know useful content. They want to see the celebrity type of stuff. And this is particularly true for fake naturals. If you're watching someone who is injecting a gram or two grams of testosterone per week, plus a bunch of other compounds, their testosterone is through the roof, their muscle mass is high, their confidence is high, they're posting pictures of themselves with tons of chicks, tons of money, uh, you know, tons of girls, all kinds of you know, mad success dog kind of shit. Consider unsubscribing from that kind of content because it's not helpful, it's not useful, and it can very, very easily put you in a very bad place mentally and probably hormonally as well. So that is all for this video. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. If you look at the increase in brain size leading to the advent of humans, you'll notice that brain size suddenly started to increase rapidly around 2 million years ago. It's a bit of a mystery what caused this increase in brain size, but it's clearly no longer needed, and we're going to go back to being literally monkeys because of the social media BS.